Hey everyone, it's me, Ultimate Gear Freak, double slash UGF, and welcome once again to UGF Podcast. This is the first one of this decade and of the year, whatever. Eh. Um, I do have things to talk about, um, but before we get started, uh, do you want to say Happy New Year's, Happy New Decade? Hopefully, you guys are, had a wonderful holiday break. For those of you who are in school, hopefully, you enjoyed. The ho whichever holiday you celebrate during the winter times, um, hopefully you got to spend time with your families and have fun and do awesome things. Um, and stay in school. <laughs> I, I don't know, but um, hopefully you guys all had fun over the holiday break. Um, but now it's back to school and I'm more comfortable recording now. So, but um. Anyway, so we have multiple things to talk about in today's episode, uh, or hopefully we'll get to them. Um, I already got a sneeze, come on. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, um, as I, as I said, any, every time I play one of these, the video in the background doesn't matter. The idea of one of these is to kind of like be doing something else while listening in. If you want to watch the video, you can, but do realize the frame rate is bad, so my computer can handle recording a podcast. So, like, you're not, you're, yeah, you're seeing in, like, 240p. Like, it, it's not good quality at all, but that's so I am able to record an hour-long video. But, anyway, so let's get into the, the uh, topics uh, today, and uh, I think... Probably the most important topic to immediately jump into is the whole entire situation with Kappa. I've calmed down now. If you did watch that video I uploaded on December 31st, you know I was really mad. So mad I was pronouncing it wrong on purpose. But I've calmed down now, and I'm willing to pronounce it correctly as Kappa instead of Copa, even though I prefer the sound of Copa. I don't know. But um, I think that is probably an extremely important thing to touch on right now. Um, so, uh, my channel is now branded as Four Children, which, the whole entire idea of that December 31st video was to give you guys a warning that you have less than 24 hours to comment your last comments and like your last likes, which, half of it was true. I was told liking system and commenting system were both going to be taken down, but only one of them did. Um... So, if you've paid attention to the recent videos that I've been uploading, you may notice that the comment section has been disabled. That's not my doing, that's because, well, I mean, it is my doing, but that's because I am branded as for children. They decided that community shouldn't happen for children. So, liking is still here, so I, then that's, that's nice. I get to learn what you guys like by a liking system. But I don't really get to talk to you guys anymore in the comment sections, which, besides the fact that I didn't really do that much already, I heavily regret not talking to you guys much when you did comment something. Um, but I'm no longer able to do that off of YouTube. And so the question may be like, well, what are you, how are you going to do it now? And the, the, the simple answer is, my Discord channel is going to kind of become the area for me to build a community for this channel. Um, do you know, I do have other channels as well. None of them currently have any videos, which one of those uh, channels I will be mentioning later on, probably coming up after I'm done with this, but those channels, um, the Discord's not completely meant for those channels. You can come from those channels and enter the Discord and be fine except for one of the channels which I don't know I'll probably end up creating a own discord for that channel I have no idea um but like the discord channel is mainly for this channel it's a mainly ultimate gamer freak double slash UGF main channel discord channel that's the idea. Um, and it's always been like that, um, even before Kappa. 
Um, but, like, yeah, so if you want to be able to con, uh, not so much contact me, please be careful, because I don't want to kick anyone. I don't like the idea of kicking people out. Um, but if you want to, like, talk to other members of the community, or myself, you want to give me video ideas or stuff, the Discord channel will be the place to do it. Now, there are certain things that I think if you have a Discord channel and you're you're, you're in other people's Discords, you kind of know, like, the, the basic rules. Like, don't message me. Like, don't DM me. Don't ping everyone. Um, don't, if you need help with something, go to the admins first before you go to me. If none of the admins are on, then you can go to me. But do note that all my admins live in the the US and so we don't have anyone to monitor the channel during night yet um, but the discord channel will be closely monitored we're gonna be making sure it is a nice and safe place hopefully hopefully because Sometimes I don't go on Discord for a while, and yeah. But um, but basically the idea of it is so you can communicate with fellow fans and myself. If you want to give me a video idea, or if you want to like talk about a video, or if you want to talk about games, there are like dedicated channels to gaming. There, I believe there is just a general tab as well, so you can just talk. Um, but that's the idea of the Discord channel is to, and now it's kind of going to have to be how it is, is to build a community off of the Discord channel and not YouTube anymore. Um, now, if you do remember, I believe in the last uh, podcast, I mentioned streaming for some reason, probably because my graphics card is not strong enough. I cannot stream yet. Um, it won't let me log in because the preferred streaming platform for me will be Twitch. I'm going to stream on Twitch. I'm not going to stream on YouTube. I will stream on Twitch. Um, but I, I can't yet. And so uh, streaming is still a hope. I do look forward to being able to stream, but I can't do it yet. Um, yeah. So that's the general basis of the whole entire COPPA situation and streaming was thrown in there. Don't know why I threw streaming in there, I just did. Um, now on to what I was going to talk about about one of the channels. I have a, so I have, if you look at my YouTube page, I have I think two or three channels on the side. One of them is my cousin. Uh, then we have two other channels that are my channels, UGF Music and UGF Crates. Those are my channels. They don't have anything yet, but they will. Uh, UGF Music is rather simple to uh, to know. It's, that's going to be my music channel. And then UGF Crates is uh, my YouTube channel for uh, anything to do with creating stuff. Um, I, I do know him. He, he's a friend of mine. Um, but it's going to be so, I, I, if you, I don't think I ever explained this, but I like to make models. I, I like to make, uh, plane models. I currently have made one model, which was fun to do. Um, and it's a model of a BF-109 G-10 which is a German plane from the Second World War. But I I also have like a model kit that I was given for my birthday of a Tiger tank. I need to get rid of that McDonald's sign. I don't even know what I was doing. Like, what is that? Um, but yeah, but like, so models will be in that channel. You'll watch me create models. Uh, also, Lego sets will be put in there as well. Those ones will be 
put ads for kids because Lego sets and uh, anything that I create if I'm creating something it would be recorded and put onto that channel if I want to share it um, and then finally we got my last channel which is more the one that I'm somewhat skeptical skeptical of sharing but I'm gonna share it anyway um, so I have a, a channel called UGF Uncensored. You may be able to guess what this is. This is uh, basically a more mature channel for more mature audiences. Um, this is I came up with this idea because there are games I play that have swearing, and I was like, I can't post this on this channel because this is a family-friendly channel. And so, but I want to record these games, and there used to be a, a channel I used to be a part of. The channel hasn't uploaded in like year, like two years. So, and I, there was a series I was doing on there. I got two episodes in, and then we stopped doing stuff on that channel. And that was like kind of like how I was gonna do it, but then we stopped recording on that channel, and I was like, oh. And so, what this UGF Uncensored channel is is basically a channel for me to play games that are not family friendly so games like the stalker series if you know what that series is that's not really a family friendly series and so that series will go on um, that channel but I don't have a powerful enough computer yet to record those games and so I haven't started anything so we have yeah and then another game that will be definitely played on that channel is Doki Doki Literature Club um, Metro, Call of Duty, World War Two, the Halo series, Master Chief Collection, which I definitely want to get. I've only played one Halo game. I I, and it was Halo Four. I do like the Halo games, even though I've only played one. I I, I I think I played like a bit of like Halo Three but it wasn't the campaign but I do like the Halo series um, I'm not 100% sure if there is swearing in the Halo series so we have to see but anyway but yeah so those are the games and stuff uh, more mature uh, types of videos would go on there so if I create kind of like a recreate like a recreation of like a war it will be posted on that channel and not this one because War is a very controversial topic and is not viewed as family friendly. But that's not what I wanted to really talk about. There is a series that I'm currently getting really close to starting up. Really close to starting up. And this series I am super excited for. So, um, it's another podcast style series. But instead of me talking about my life and talking and talking like this one, it's instead us, me with a group of people playing a game. A very famous game. Because many people know it. Now, it's not the game. It's this in the style of the game. And so, um, I guess I'll announce it now. Uh, hopefully real soon, because we're working on it. We're, I'm trying to find a way to, like, I'm currently creating it, well, I'm not creating it, uh, Gunsorga, who is, like, one of my cousins, he's creating the game, um, but we're currently trying to schedule when we can record it, but, why am I having a hard time, it, um, so, hopefully real soon, we, I, uh, on that channel, the a D D podcast or D D style podcast will start to be uploaded. Um, we are, as I said, my cousin's currently making the game. I'm starting to create my character. Um, the first series will be a Mech Warrior D D style game. Um, as I said, D D they're long games, and so we need to make sure like we have enough time to record a few sessions and two of the people work at the same job and they're like the only two working at that uh, certain job at that job whatever 
Um, so it's kind of hard to get them being able to be free at the same time, which is the main problem. Because me and the other person, we're, we're, we're completely fine. We don't have careers at all right now. We're like pretty much just open to whenever. Um, but yeah, so the name of the podcast is going to be called The Perfect 20. Uh, I got this idea when I discovered Just Roll With It, which is a, a really good D&D podcast. I highly recommend it if you are into, like, if you are not sensitive to swearing and stuff. If you are fine with swearing and and more mature substance, I highly recommend watching, uh, listening to Just Roll With It. He's going in for a second go. Wow. Um, but I highly recommend listening to it because it it's a it's it's a fantastic, fantastic fantastic series and it's the series that inspired me to um create a D&D podcast series and dude just just think about it how perfect of a name the perfect not the perfect 20 uh how perfect the name of just roll with it is for a D&D style game well I think they actually play D&D though unlike me or mine, but like that's such a perfect name. Oh, I did a different style, but it is such a good name. And I was like, Oh, that's such a good name. I need a good name. And so that's how the perfect 20 came around. Um, I'm still working on the, uh, the, the picture for it, but like, so the reason why it's called the perfect 20 is because it's, I feel a good sounding name for a D and D podcast. Um, so, uh, but do note, uh, And this is more towards like the huge D and D nerds. It's not technically D and D because D and D is a game, if I'm correct. I may be wrong, but I believe D and D is like a a game, like that's the name of the game, not the style. Um, it's I think role play is the the style of game that D and D is. But um, yeah, I'm doing this to protect my butt from you guys. Um, it's not technically D and D. Because it's we're not actually doing D and D. As I said, like the first episode is Mech Warrior uh, style game. Like yeah, and um, the, the basic idea is to get many different uh, dungeon masters and different players, and so like you have different experiences because they're different people. Now. and different dungeon masters. So we have one that is, and I believe we're all currently making our own games. Uh, the one that we're playing is an already made game. Like my cousin didn't invent this game. It's already existed. Um, and we're just using it because I want to get this started, but I like, I really want to get this started and we don't really have enough time to wait, um, like, cause I'm, in, I'm somewhat impatient, and sometimes in order to get something started, you need to be a little bit impatient. Like, like everyone says, patience is the key to great success. Sometimes it's not. Sometimes you need to be impatient to get something going, and I feel like this may be one of those things where it's like I need to be impatient in order to get this started, and so, yeah, so. First series is uh, Mech Warrior, and then the series that all of us are making. One of them, I, I haven't talked to him about what his series is. I think he's probably just trying to do a normal style D and D game. Um, one of my friends, who's another player, uh, is doing a space theme one, and then I am doing a World War Two one. But of course, we need to start it off, and we're starting off with Mech Warrior. And I'm super excited about this series. I really am. Because this... I... I 
when I, I played a little bit of D&D, there was a D&D club at my school. Sadly, I had to stop going to it, which actually ended up getting me kicked out because I couldn't go anymore because of Band. Which, no offense to D&D, but Band is more important to me than Dungeons and Dragons at that time. Um... But, I had to stop going. But, when I was going, I loved it. I loved d d It is such a fun game. And, if you've never played d d before, give it a try. Like, don't diss it, and don't diss the players until you've tried it. Because I know that's a thing, like, people are like, oh, Dungeons & Dragons players are nerds, or... Which, there's nothing wrong being nerds. I mean, I'm a nerd. But, like, we're like, oh, you're so stupid for playing Dungeons & Dragons. It's like, don't diss something you've never tried. And that's a, that's a very important life lesson. It's the same one, it's like the very same ballpark of don't judge a book by its cover. Don't judge something without doing it. Don't diss Dungeons & Dragons without ever playing around with Dungeons and Dragons or don't diss video games before ever playing a game of video uh, like a video game well video games is a little bit touchy typically you attack certain genres don't attack that genre without playing it at least once but D&D is for me a very fun game and I think for a lot of people it is a fun game and yes we look a little bit like nerds especially when you go into like LARP territory where you're live action role playing which honestly actually kind of sounds interesting to me I kind of want to try that out which I know is like a cringy thing apparently but like it actually sounds fun a little bit to like dress up as your character and go out in public and play the game in public from what I understand is what LARPing is it actually sounds somewhat interesting to me. Um, I don't have enough money to do it yet, but it is actually something I do plan on doing at some point in time. Is like for especially for the podcast. I think it'd be for the podcast. Um, like we all like we make a game, we get a cosplay for our characters, and then we meet out in public and live action role play it. And, excuse me. And honestly, I think that episode would be like a special. Mm, because, yeah, it's going to have to be something like a special podcast. So, like, oh, the 100th episode. Actually, I don't think it would be the 100th episode. It'd be like some big milestone or something. Whatever. But I do actually have interest in doing and trying it. But, yeah. But I do know that D&D players do tend to get put into the category of nerds. Sometimes you and just because you play D&D doesn't mean you're a nerd. Cuz I've met some D&D players who are not nerds. They 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 they're just a normal person who is just playing a game and they're not all too nerdy. Cuz I think when you think of a nerd for D&D, it's like a, someone who like really knows their stuff or like acts like they know their stuff. And I have met some of those people. I'm friends with some of those people. I, I know someone who knows a lot about guns. Um, I I know I like to learn about World War II, and I know quite a bit about it. N not a, like not as much as like a historian, but I do plan on like learning more and taking in more. I freaking have a humongous book, literally called The Second World War. And all it is is facts about the Second World War. That's all it is. And I am reading it, taking notes, be and and if you guys don't really know me, but in order for me to actually read something and take notes, I actually have to be interested in what it is. Like, there were several books I had to read during school, which like I was just like I I didn't even bother taking notes when I was supposed to, and it's just like well I don't have any interest in this. Why should I take notes? And so, I just never took any notes. And, But for me to be taking notes on something, 
it means that I find it important or I have an interest in it. So I'm like a big World War II nerd. I have a person who knows a lot about guns. I have a friend who just knows a lot of general information. There are some things he's gotten wrong, but I think I think no matter what, even if like you're highly weren't uh, into a highly learn into something, you're gonna get something wrong. I've gotten things wrong about the Second World War before. Uh, my friend has gotten some things wrong about guns before. It's okay to be wrong, just as long as you admit that you're wrong and fix it. Uh, which, the one problem with that one friend is, I don't think he realizes he's wrong. I don't think he wants to realize that he's wrong, but, um, but yeah, but, it's okay to be a nerd. Always remember that, but just because someone plays D&D &D doesn't mean they are a nerd. They may just have an interest in playing the game, or whatnot. Like, cause... I, I know nothing about medieval combat. Like, I barely know a single thing about medieval combat other than like, oh, they, they had swords and bows and crossbows and maces, halberds, knights, horses. That's about it. I, I have an interest in learning how to, like, like one of the things it, that on my bucket list is to learn the old Germanic style of fighting. I plan on eventually owning a longsword because I like the look of longswords. And getting a somewhat medieval cosplay. Like, like the cosplay and the, is not so much a long term, like, it's not so much a bucket list. Neither, neither is the uh, longsword. The, uh, the learning of a certain style is a uh, bucket list thing, though. I do want to learn the old Germanic fighting style because it's an interesting fighting style I've never learned, and from what I understand, in some aspects, it's better than the British one. It's better than the one that most people are common are familiar with, but of course, the British one is also better in some aspects too. Each has their advantages and each has their disadvantages, but I do want to learn the old Germanic fighting style, and that's one of my bucket lists. Another one of my bucket lists, which I think I have shared before, is flying a World War II uh, warbird at some point, um, which that one is a long-term goal, because you think about it, not only do I have to learn how to fly, I also need to somehow be allowed to fly a warbird from the Second World War, which means it needs to be safe to fly. I also need to get permission, which the only way I don't need to get permission is if I'm the one who repairs the aircraft, and it is my aircraft, then it's, well, my aircraft, and I can do what I please. Except I need to get the uh, FAC, I think it's called, the Federal Air Commission, to grant me the permission to fly. I mean, of course, there's air shows, which I would definitely be able to fly at, but my main bucket list thing is to fly over a beach, which that's going to have to be, like, something. But, um, yeah, that, that's, like, one of my main goals. But, anyway, but this D&D podcast, it's currently in the works. Um, we are getting really close to getting it going, and it is something that I am super excited for, and... If you have any interest in D&D or uh, you m m want to try D&D out, you want to see if you have interest in it, I do highly recommend that when it comes out, there will be a video that will be uh, put on this channel of our favorite, um, the, our, the player and the Dungeon Master's favorite spots in uh, the first one or two episodes of the series. Um... So you can get a taste for how it is. Do know that it is being put on the uncensored channel though for a reason. And that is the people who I know like to play D&D are not exactly family friendly. And so 
do be aware. Now, the one that we're playing with, ow, um, like the the first this Mech Warrior one. All the people I know in this are rather family friendly. They they can watch their mouth, but do be aware though that they are probably not all going to be uh, family friendly. So I do recommend that you are fine with swearing and fine with descriptive gore. And so yeah, but there's something to look forward to if you are a, a you are a Dungeons and Dragons type of person or you want to try to see if you like it or not. Do note, as I said though, this is not Dungeons and Dragons, this is Dungeons and Dragons style role playing. Anyway, so we got that out of the way. Um computer update. Uh I have a new graphics card. I can't use it yet. Because I need Windows 64, which I'm pretty sure my handle, my computer can have that. Because I've played some games that I've tried to download again, and they say they need Windows 64. And I was like, I've played this game on here before, so I, my computer could probably take Windows 64. But um, I also need a power source for the graphics card, because the power source for my PC alone, the thing that is powering my whole entire PC, doesn't even produce enough power by itself to run the graphics card. So, yeah. So if I somehow magically end up with a 450 watts external power source, then I'll figure out and mess around and get the new graphics card installed. If, But that's only if I end up somehow magically ending up with a 450 watt external power source for computers. Um, which is a weird thing to say. Somehow magically turns up with one, and if I, and if I somehow magically turn up with one, I'm gonna be like, what the heck just happened? Um, but basically, the main idea though right now is to just get a new PC. It may be cheaper to get an external power source, but I I want a new PC anyway. Um, Yeah, um, cause just in case it doesn't, but I'm pretty sure it can handle Windows 64. That's another thing though, is like the reason why I kind of want like, to just get a new PC, which doesn't even really avoid the problem, is cause I don't want to uninstall everything just to get on Windows 64. I don't really want to do the process again, but I will if I have to. But yeah, so that's, uh, computer updates. Uh, I also, uh... For Christmas, I got a few things, because I, I celebrate Christmas. I got a nice big monitor, which doesn't help the situation. I mean, yes, it's a nice new monitor, but it lags my computer now because my graphics card is not strong enough to handle the, the monitor for some games. I haven't been able to play War Thunder, and there's a few other games I haven't been able to play because the graphics card is like, hold on, <sighs> I can't handle HD because it's an HD monitor. So it's, it's 1260 by 1080 or something like that. So my, my computer freaks out at some games, like War Thunder. Um, I also got a nice uh, Galaxy Lava Lamp, which, for those of you who don't know, I love the look of like a galaxy in space and stuff. Like, there's something about space that is super mystifying to me, Like, and I've talked to my friends about this too, is with space music, like... I don't exactly know what it is about space music, but I just love space music. It, it when it's done correctly. Now there are certain space uh, songs that are famous that are not done incorrectly, but I'm not too huge of a fan of them. And I think the best example of that is the uh, Star Wars music. Um, it's not done bad. It's a good. It's good soundtrack, but to me, it's not space. It doesn't feel like space to me. And so, like, in the grand things of things, like, when I think about, uh, 
Sours? I don't think space music. I, I do not think in, of space music in the slightest. And, yeah. So, but things like, uh, uh, if you ever listen to, uh, Aviator's, uh, song, uh, playlist, Infinity Awaits Us, there's a lot of really beautiful songs in there. And the song that I'll be talking about is the first song you hear in the playlist, which is Infinity Awaits Us. Um, that is really close to the to the definition of space music for me. Long sustaining notes, beautiful, beautiful tone, and it's just like, there is something about that music that I enjoy very, very much. And, it, it, it's for some reason, I don't know why, but space has such a beauty to it. It's also a little bit scared because whoa, whoa, space. But um But there's just something beautiful and something that attracts me about space. Space is is beautiful in my opinion. And I do hope that um space travel does become a thing within my lifespan and it will hopefully be something that I could try out now of course when space travel comes out first I'm not uh, I'm not gonna try it <laughs> no thank you but um it is something I want to try out when space travel becomes more of a regular thing and and stuff But yeah, so I got a galaxy themed lava lamp. I also got a cooking book because I don't know how to cook. I I've never cooked anything in my life until just recently. Um like uh what is it? The Friday after Christmas was the first time I ever cooked anything in my life. And I I don't mean microwave because of course I microwave stuff. I mean like cook cook. I Turn on the, the 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 stove. Sizzle some food. Chop some vegetables up and all that stuff. And what I made on that Friday is my family's German potato uh, salad recipe, which my dad got from his mom, and who knows how long that went. But I tried. I cooked a family tradition as my first meal, and it actually turned out pretty good. And definitely is something that I will make even when I'm living on my own and I got a cookbook as well to uh, start getting me more used to cooking it has a bunch of recipes in here that I can try out um, the recipe that I'm gonna be trying out next is a simple burger now the beautiful thing about this book though is it teaches you how to make the meal not not like oh well I have a patty, but sizzle it. No, you make the patty. You It tells you to buy ground meat and teaches you how to form the patty and cook it. It teaches you how to spot a good piece of meat, how to how to shop for vegetables and how to shop for meat and all that stuff. Um, and it teaches you how to make meals from scrap, which is, according to the book, I, I have... As I said, I'm a noob to cook. No, blah, blah, blah. I'm a noob to cooking, so I don't know much about cooking. But according to the book, cooking from scrap is cheaper than pre-made stuff. So I'm going to be learning how to make cheapish stuff. So, um, well, not cheapish, but I mean like food that is cheaper than buying already made patties. Like instead of buying already made patties for 12 bucks I buy the meat that I need for those patties for like six bucks saving six bucks um, I, I don't know what prices are because I don't go shopping but I am learning how to cook um, what's some other things 
Uh, got a movie on World War II. Got a World War II book. Uh, for those of you who do not know, uh, I am a fan of uh, Ghost Adventures, which is a Travels Channel TV show. I think it's still running. It may not be, but I'm a fan of that series. And so I was really excited when they uh, got me a DVD set for the third season. Because I... It was one of my favorite series when I had cable. I no longer have cable. And I kind of forgot about it until, like, last year. And I was like, bro, Ghost Adventures. And so they got me uh, Ghost Adventures, which I've already finished all three DVDs. Um, what else? They got me a bunch of candy, which I can't really eat candy anymore. Because candies bother me. Um, which is something that I can't even get checked out anymore because I don't have dental coverage. All, all I have is basic medical, co medical coverage. So I can't get... I can't get eye exams. I can't get dental work. Which does suck because I think I do have some problem that I need to get checked out. Because for some reason, when I eat something like chocolate, it hurts a tooth. Like, there's a tooth in the back of my jaw or something that just does not like sweetness or something. It's, uh, and I can't get it checked out. Plus, I need to get my wisdom teeth removed before I enter the military. Oh, that's something I need to talk about. Oh, um, military. I think last time it was... I think I mentioned it. Um... I'm s I haven't even gotten the paperwork yet that I need. Um, I mean, I already had the uh, medical files, so that wasn't the problem. It's the uh, pharmacy files on me. I haven't been able to get because I needed an ID, which I did go to the DMV the Monday of the week before Christmas. I haven't gotten and I did all the stuff for it to get an ID. Uh, I haven't gotten the ID yet. It, it they did say like. 7 to 14 business days and we got my we went to get my D right at the holiday season and so I don't even think it's been 7 business days yet <laughs> rip um but hopefully soon I'll be getting my ID and then I'll be able to get my pharmacy records and then I will be able to go back to the recruiter and be like hey I got that stuff you wanted yeah let's and then be there for an hour answering a whole bunch of questions and then, and then the fun part, waiting. Now, things have happened that may increase, wait, may decrease the wait time. Because when I went, it was right after, uh, it was in August or whatever, and I think, like, we were, like, done with war. Like, the war, like, war in Syria was kind of ending. And so, I was told, oh, well, it's going to take a while, and, like, based on the stack of, the only went through like four pages a day and it's like based on that stack it's expected to be like half a year um but now with things going on with Iran it may be quicker which it's never war is never a good thing and don't take this wrong war war is never never a good thing never a good thing but I'm slightly happy that this is happening because it does mean that I could possibly get in quicker. Now it also means that I possibly could get denied quicker which uh oh but um yeah, if I get denied oh no but I, I should be fine but The sad truth of the matter is that, and as I said, war is never good, but I am kind of happy, happy that whatever this situation is, ha kind of happened because it does mean that I could possibly get in quicker. Um, now apparently they're worried about starting World War Three. I don't really have anything to say on that other than what? Like, unless Russia gets involved and we have a huge fight, I don't think it'll cause World War III. I think we'll be fine. 
And let's just hope they don't use nukes in World War Three. And that's kind of like the main hypothesis of what will happen if World War Three happens is just nuclear apocalypse. Because why waste manpower when you can just nuke the other country? Oh, wait, but now the whole entire world's gone. Thanks. Yeah, let's just hope that our leaders are not stupid enough to use nukes. Which, honestly, sometimes I wish nukes never happened, but then again, if nukes never happened, we would have had World War Three right after World War Two. So. Because the whole entire idea of the Cold War was nobody wanted to do anything because everyone was afraid of the nukes. Not so much anymore. Um, we've kind of... Yeah. Um, Dude, honestly, I, I wish... We had better relationships with Russia. I do. Because if we had better relationships with Russia, World War Three would be extremely unlikely. But our relationships with Russia are skeptical, skeptical at best. But, yeah. But, so, military currently in the works. Um, getting close. Super excited to be getting my, uh, ID. But, we're getting there. Now, what else is there? That was military. Um, what else is there to talk about? Um, there's something else I got. Oh, I also got a bunch of Tower Terror stuff, which, if, for those of you who do not know, I'm heavily into the Tower Terror. Heavily into the Tower Terror. And I... Don't get me wrong. Uh, Mission Breakout is a fun ride. It is a fun ride, but, um, in my opinion, Tower Terror is better. Now, uh, all it is is personal preference. Like, Mission Breakout is not a bad ro uh, ride in the slightest. It is a fun ride. It's just, my preference is towards the Tower of Terror. And, I do miss the Tower of Terror. Um, and so, like, kind of like my way to deal with it is to get a whole bunch of Tower Terror stuff. I have, uh, we all know my Tower Terror bell, which I ding in like almost every video. Um, and I got that for my birthday, I think. I now have a Tsum Tsum of Goofy and a Bellhop uh, attire, which is cute. And I also got a collector, a collector's pin. Of uh, Mickey Mouse, like the the Mickey Mouse head, whatever thing that's very famous, uh, with like uh, Tower Terror aesthetics. So, yeah, Tower Terror stuff. I love Tower Terror. Um, okay, Steam. Which we're now moving on from uh, Tower Terror to uh, gaming. So. I think you guys all can see this. Uh, I have a plan, um, but I still need to work out a few things. Uh, so the plan is at the end of the video for like a month, uh, it will show the schedule for next week's uh, videos. And but yeah, it'll show the, the 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 plan. So like, oh, Monday will be. Uh, Game Park Tycoon 2, and Tuesday will be Lumion Legacies, and Wednesday will be Murder Mystery 2. That. Um, and then, after a month, it will go on over to my Discord channel. So, if you're part of the Discord channel, you get to see what is up and coming. 
Now, that hasn't happened yet because I am still figuring out what games I can even play. And it's actually quite a bit harder because the thing is, like, a lot, like, I play a lot of the games I play are Roblox right now because Roblox is a somewhat <laughs> a reliable source of able to play it. Um, now, there are some games on Roblox that I cannot play. Um, and I think. But yeah, so basically, the problem with some of the games on Roblox is bad optimization. And I think the worst one I saw was a game called Bad Business. I no longer play the game because of that reason. It has extremely bad optimization because I turned on the recording and, like, I, it was unplayable the whole entire time. And I recorded, like, ten minutes. And I was like, I cannot play this game. And the reason why is because it was badly optimized. And you might be like, well, maybe you can't play FPS. Well, let me correct you because I played Arsenal on this channel before. Arsenal is an FPS. And it ran rather fine. There are a few problems, but it wasn't constant lagging. And bad business is worse graphics than Arsenal. So there should be no reason for bad business to be so badly performing. So the reason why it was badly performing is because it's badly optimized. And so I just stopped playing that game entirely. Um, Phantom Forces kind of makes sense. I kind of expected it to not be well running because uh, you've got tons of highly detailed guns in there. Highly detailed maps. That and also Phantom Forces gets me to rage rather easily. I do have a problem with raging in that game. But um, yeah. And I don't even know if I can play Arsenal anymore because of the new, P new monitor. And it's just like it like I'm playing Arsenal by itself without recording it and it has lagging issues so I don't think I can play Arsenal anymore until I get a new PC or a new graphics card put in uh, Steam games uh, it, was, it was bad enough uh, FTL I did record a, a video of FTL on here it ran rather fine it just I have to record the screen and I'm not in the mood to deal with that. And with the new monitor, it should still be fine because uh, FTL is a turn-based type of game mostly. And I can plan ahead. So if I have a lag spike while being attacked and my thing charges up, if I played it smart, it should already be targeted at something. So it'll just immediately fire. But um, FTL is a game I do plan on playing and I'm going to try to uh, get it to work again. I have to record the screen because... I recorded the gameplay on, on as a game setting, and then it didn't want to save. So that's why there was no FTL episode. That's why you didn't see it. Um, but I've played other games, which we'll try to, and it doesn't work. I don't know why. It's just a weird problem where, like, I have it going, and then I launch the game, and the game is super small. It's not even, like, a minimized game. It is, like... maybe like 100 pixels by 100 pixels and it's like that's not minimized that is just ridiculously small and I, I don't know what was happening if you have an idea well you can't come in the comment section anymore my suggestion would be uh, hit me up on discord Ow! but um yeah but steam games I can't play war thunder even before the monitor I was skeptical at playing because it has it, the only way I could actually decently play it is if I view replays, and I don't like doing that unless I'm in a podcast um, like this. So War Thunder is a no. Um, there are a few other games that I've looked at. As like I might play that, but I can't play it yet. Ow. But, so basically, like, all the games that I know I can play, they have to be, like, Roblox. Minecraft is a good example. I want to play Minecraft. Can't yet, though. 
like, like I, certain area biomes, like my Minecraft already lags without recording. Which you wouldn't think Minecraft is a heavy game, but it is. It is for some reason an extremely heavy graphics game. But yeah, Minecraft, I, I do want to start up the series again. I had, I have a new world on my laptop that was supposed to be recorded, but didn't want to record. So yeah, I'll just start off with that world, whatever, like where I'm at. Because my old world got corrupted. But, um, yeah, I've been messing around with the bees update. It was nice. Um, but yeah, so Minecraft is something I do look forward to doing, but as I said, need a better graphics card. Move to do. Same thing for streaming. Need a better, better graphics card. Now here's another thing though, War Thunder, um, I don't really know where to place War Thunder, because I don't know if War Thunder is placeable in this channel. Like in my opinion, it is, it is, the way I play it, it's perfectly fine, but I don't know of any other War Thunder YouTubers who, like, don't swear or anything, and so it's just like, well, if you find War Thunder on my channel and then you go to other people's channels, like the most famous War Thunder YouTuber, Fly Daily, and it's like, it's like, it's not PG. But for me, it is PG. The way I will play it is PG. And of course, if I do have a recording session that turns into un PG, well, then it would go onto my uh, uncensored channel if I find it good enough to be a video. But War Thunder. Uh, if you have anything, as I said, Discord channel, because I don't have comments anymore, but yeah. But that's basically what is happening with my life right now, and the channel, and we're getting really close to a, an hour. My mouth is tired because I recorded many, many videos yesterday, but I'm just going to end it here. Um, so I'd like to thank you guys for listening in to this podcast if you made it this far congratulations I would say comment something in the comments but as I keep on saying Coppa says no I almost said Copa again anyway um yeah I hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did please do leave a like because the liking system is still a thing yes um so I can still know and I, I it's such a force of habit to say that too because I said in my videos before I even knew if it was still a thing but Please leave a like if you're at all new to, new to this channel, if you've been here before, but that subscribe button is still red. Please do click it and also ring that notification bell so you can get notified the next time I upload. Do you look forward to the D&D podcast, The Perfect 20? I have high hopes for it, and I hope you guys, too, will enjoy it. Um, but, as I said, I'd like to thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you Monday. Peace out.